Hey, hey, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Thanks, Squarespace. Yay. Hey. Wow. Hi. My name is Thomas Brush. I am not the creator of this game. I'm so used to saying I'm the creator of. I'm not the creator of this game. I'm the creator of a game called Neversong and also a game called Pinstripe. Today we're going to play a game called Hashtag Fun Time. And the reason why I like this game, the reason why I'm excited about it is number one, it's a great game. But number two, it's actually from a subscriber to this channel. So one of you guys actually made a game and you released it on Steam. So bravo, that's amazing. So first and foremost guys, leave a comment below encouraging the creator of this game. And his name is Brandon. Brandon, really great game man, congratulations. Uh, just be sure guys to remember that we want to encourage Brandon. So if you have any uh, compliments or critiques, make sure they're constructive uh, and leave them in the comments below. Guys, be sure to like, subscribe, and also click the link below if you want to check out Full Time Game Dev, where people like Brandon, people like you guys can actually learn how to make games. Um, I'm going to let you guys know when that course is live, but for the time being, you can sign up for a notification when the course is live. So let's go ahead and play Brandon's game, hashtag fun time. Okay guys, before we get started, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Believe it or not, I've been wanting Squarespace as a sponsor for so long, mainly because Squarespace is awesome. <laughs> I've been using Squarespace for, I think, six years. Um, both my websites, thomasbrush.com and atmosgames.com, where I host my games and my portfolio, my resume, all that cool stuff is hosted on Squarespace. It was created with Squarespace. Squarespace is cool because you can look amazing, you can have custom designs and pretty much do anything you need to do um, for your business or your own personal brand, all with Squarespace and you don't have to know how to code. So if you guys are interested in creating a website um, with Squarespace, click the link below, squarespace.com slash Thomas Brush, and use the promo code Thomas Brush for 10% off. Yay, yay, I love Squarespace, I really do. <laughs> Thanks, Squarespace. All right, challenge mode. First off, Brandon, I love the menu here. Um, the glow effect, I can assume that is actually a camera effect or a post-processing effect. For those of you guys who don't know, inside of Unity, there is something called post-processing, and it's just a simple effect. So I can imagine that Brandon's menu system is actually really clean. Um, there's no glowing, but the moment you turn on the glow effect, everything glows, and it makes it look like more, more of an arcade, more of a Geometry Wars look. All right, so let's just go ahead and start on the first level. I've played this game a little bit, and I have some critique for it, but uh, I wanted to formulate that critique a little bit. So I played a little bit of it, and so we're gonna start on the first level here. So I see here it's kind of like Angry Birds. We need to get three stars. That's in 45 seconds. So let's see if we can do it. Okay, a little critique here, Brandon. And this is some critique that I formulated while playing the game before we started recording. I'd love to see, instead of you telling us that, I'd love for you to show us that. So maybe at the top left, you could pinpoint, pause the game, so set time scale to zero, and just say, hey, this is your current upgrade, because I don't want to have to look around for it while I'm playing. But that's just a tiny critique. Okay, so the space bar and enter usually do something. My keyboard is broken again! Okay. <laughs> okay, enter does it. All right, so it'd be cool if space bar could actually progress me. Let's go! All right. Man, Thomas, you're good at this game. That's because I've been playing it for a little bit before recording. Okay, not so good there. <laughs> yeah, I lied. All right, go, 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 go. All right, good, 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 good. Get the health. I can just blast through there, who cares? All right, we got three stars. Can we give a bravo to Thomas in the comments? <laughs> okay, a little critique here, Brandon. Restart is space and next level is return. I think a lot of gamers like me, we're gonna just smash the keyboard as fast as we can. We're not gonna be reading stuff. So what I would do is make sure that people don't restart the level by just smashing space because that's, intuitively, that's what I'm gonna press. So instead, I think R or escape or something like that, because I'm using a keyboard, would be really great because 
We want people to intentionally restart the level. Two, fundamentals. Score as many points as possible. Upon taking damage, your multiplier resets to 1.0. Okay, yeah, I like the on-screen directions there for shooting. Whoa, Thomas, come on, man. I love that spawn effect, that's really cool. Really great graphics, the particle effects are awesome. The squares, I love how the squares move in the grid. Um, I could assume you set this grid up with code, so some kind of array. So that's really cool. Bravo to you, Brandon, for that. And I love how they press down in the Z axis, or maybe that's the Y axis. I assume it's the Y axis. A little critique, um, <clears throat> it would be great if the, the ship could point in the direction of the mouse, as opposed to pointing in the direction of the movement, because it's really hard to see that arrow. Now, I understand that if it's a twin stick shooter, um, most people are gonna probably play on a controller, but I'm playing on a mouse and keyboard, and so it would be helpful if, for those of us who are playing with a mouse and keyboard. Man, I suck. <laughs> I make games, I don't really play them, I'll be honest with you guys. Okay, but not bad here. I'm almost at three stars. Once we're at three stars, we'll just, I guess, maybe give up a little bit on this level. <laughs> No, this is great. It feels like, if I was about to say Flash Geometry Wars. The reason I was gonna say that is because I made a game called Flash Geometry Wars and it's on Newgrounds.com. Very similar to Geometry Wars. But this game feels like Geometry Wars as well. And Brandon's done an incredible job replicating that feeling. So good job, Brandon. Three stars, I love it. Next level. And I love that effect. I'm assuming that's a vortex effect or what's it called? It's like, it's a, I know it's a post-processing effect in Unity, but it's really cool, I love it. Okay, Brandon, I love this mechanic. This is the coolest mechanic. Guys, basically, we need to match the color of the lasers and flames to avoid damage. The problem, Brandon, and I, I played this before I, I, I've been, I started streaming, and I got really frustrated and I rage quit the game and I thought to myself, I'm not gonna upload this video because I can't even get past this level. The reason why it was frustrating is it has nothing to do with the mechanic. It has everything to do with the instructions. So on this screen, there's nothing that tells me how to do this. And I had to look on the menu, on the controls, and we set our color with one, two, three, and four. I didn't know that. Um, so I'm glad that I checked the instructions after I restarted. Um, so maybe in a future Steam release, right down here you can put change colors with your numpad or something like that. All right, let's go. One, two. But I see what you did here. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> that's really cool, I like that a lot. Oh man, that's a really cool mechanic, dude. Oh crap, I suck. One, okay, that's three. Ah! <laughs> I love this mechanic, I absolutely love it. Um, the only problem, again, is just the key, the instructions. Man, I suck so hard. But that is a cool mechanic, Brandon. You should be really proud. What do you guys think? Leave a comment to encourage Brandon. That's really, really cool. I love it, but it also stresses me out. So we're just gonna move forward. I'll take one star. How do I do a color, color trail? That's the question at hand. Again, Brandon, maybe some instructions could really help here. So clarity and instructions would be great, but we can always go and take a look at the options, go to controls, yellow, is it boost? Cycle colors, oh, you can use your scroll wheel. Yeah, this, I feel like you need to just show these instructions at the beginning of, of certain levels. Okay, so cycle colors, bomb, and then space is boost. Maybe that's what I need to do? No. Oh, I see, very cool, Brandon, I love this. I love it, dude. There we go. Let's kill you, you effer. Come on, come on. Yeah, you think you're so smart. Lock you in, there we go. That's awesome. I love these, this, uh, just starting with a very simplistic mechanic like color and then extending it. I think that's really cool. And Brandon's smart. The reason why Brandon is smart is because he understands he's probably got a very limited budget as an indie developer. And what a limited budget meet forces you to do is take a small mechanic like color, for example, and then extend, extend, extend. And that means you don't have to write too much new code. 
And you see, even, even studios like Nintendo will do this. They'll take a very simplistic mechanic and extend, 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 and exhaust it until they run out of ideas as a team. That's a very effective, economical way to make games, but it's also really fun for the player. Players actually like that simplicity. So it's budget friendly and also just fun for the player. These kind of reaction games, or what do you call them? Um, instinct games? No, they're not even, what are they called? <laughs> I can't remember. They're called something. Um, where you, it's timed, it's like how, how fast I can do something. I suck at all this stuff. That's why I don't really do Let's Plays. Because I'm bad at games and I'm not good at knowing how to talk while I play games. I know words, I have the best words. If you guys want, click the link in the description and support Brandon. I think I think Brandon should be really proud of what he's made here. I appreciate that infinite health, Brandon. You're a very nice guy. Cause you knew you knew deep down I needed it, didn't you? Okay, I'm quitting. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Let's keep going. This is fun. You only have three bombs per level, use them wisely. Score as many points. See, the problem is I need I'd love to see the controls. How do I use a bomb? Um there he goes. Okay, no, that's great. Right there, down here. It's right click. So that's awesome. I'm confused as to why those instructions weren't on certain levels when it was describing color. All right. This feels great. I love it. The particle, again, the particle effects are really great. All right, our target is 10,000. So we're almost there. You know what's funny is when you first start playing these games, you feel like, one, they're too hard. And then two, you feel like I'm, my, my ship moves too fast. But once you sort of play them and, and get used to them, you realize, oh, the developer knew what he was doing. Brandon knew exactly what he was doing. One of the, I guess, positives of these kinds of arcade games is that once the player figures things out, they've invested energy and time into it and they become obsessed. But the negative is people who don't have that kind of I guess predisposition towards arcade games, they'll play the game for five minutes and then quit because they just feel like it's too hard. Um, I, th I guess that's why, you know, Atari games were so popular back in the day because there were so few games to actually play. So it kind of forced the player to be invested in the game. Now, because there's so many games out there, you have to get the player's attention immediately. And so that might be a tiny critique of this game. Uh, and that is maybe start it out a little bit easier for the player. Um, because again, maybe 20, 30% of your audience or more is going to be a lot like me and maybe not like how challenging it is right off the bat. So maybe, maybe it's not necessarily about the challenge. Maybe it's about the reward. Maybe you could, I was about to say, crates <laughs> like reward crates man I, I think i'm turning into a capitalist pig what do you do with witches <laughs> um but maybe something at the end of a level reward the player with an upgrade or something like that um maybe it's maybe it's purely just a value add maybe allow them to change the color of their ship well that's a mechanic maybe change the visual of their ship or make an icon or name their ship or something to reward them for I guess pushing through that struggle of the first couple levels. So that's maybe uh, another critique as well. Again, if this game was made in the 80s, I think that it would be totally fine to have it as challenging as it is, but people are less patient in the year of 2020, that's for sure. All right, we're gonna do another level. So let's go to level nine here. Oh my goodness, looks like World War III here. Okay, the encounter. Reach the end as quickly as possible. Your ship is invulnerable while boosting. Hey, now. Okay, so what is the end? I don't know what the end is. Oh, it's going to be a maze. Cool. Friendship. That's funny. <laughs> hey, Brandon, did you mean to make that like a pun? It'd be cool if it was friend.ship or friend space ship. So I'm invulnerable while I boost. I see. So it's a, it's a, it's a one-time boost. Okay, so how do I reach the end? What's the end? I kind of wish the shooting sound was a little bit louder. I know it can get annoying, but I can barely even hear it. Um, so I don't know. Maybe it's the music's too loud, but that's not, that's a very minor critique. I can imagine it's very frustrating watching me play. Okay, so I need to shoot these. Okay, the red I can't shoot. Duh, Thomas, come on, man. Sorry guys, I'm not playing with a joystick. That's why I suck here. 
That's one of the many reasons why I suck. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, I had three older brothers growing up and they always played games. I didn't play the games. That's why my games are story driven. That's where my mind connects with things. I really, really suck. I'm at the point now where I'm getting kind of embarrassed and it makes me want to stop this stream because of how embarrassed I am. <laughs> how embarrassed I am. Uh, so we're gonna do that, but Overall, dude, I give you a great review for this game. I think it's awesome. I think you did a really good job. I'm gonna give you an eight out of 10. The reason why is because of the lack of instruction when it comes to controls. That is my primary reason why I'm gonna give you an eight out of 10. Um, I definitely gonna recommend people support you and play this game. So guys, click the link in the description, leave a comment, subscribe, and also leave a like. This was really, really great. Um, and honestly, man, I think you should be really proud. So round of applause for hashtag fun time. It was a really hashtag fun time. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, arcade games aren't really my thing, um, but I can imagine this would be really fun for so many players out there. So congratulations. You've, uh, you've released a good game. I'll talk to you guys later.